my cousin Ernie was moving to California. His family were all going west for more opportunity. And, and since he was leaving, he was handing me his job, janitor at St. Raphael's Catholic Church, a church that had been established for and by French Canadian immigrants, which included my family. Cousin Ernie and I were both 14, and for someone at our age in the early 1960s, church janitor was a good job, vacuuming, waxing floors, dusting, especially the radiators, and whatever other cleaning the, the priest wanted for two bucks an hour. Great. This job at St. Raphael's would be a critical part of my personal coming of age Fellini movie. Coming of age as a youth in the early 1960s came with a version of The Talk, mine from my farmer dad. One day, I was probably 10 years old, and he said, come on. And we went out to our little barn, and he put our cow Agatha on a lead line and gave me the line. Come on. So we headed down the hill to my Uncle Joe's farm. He had about 20 cows, but more importantly, he had a bull. As we approached Uncle Joe's, the bull started to bellow. I mean, really bellow that echoed in the hills all around us. The massive bull was on a long chain, which looped around his neck and then was connected to a crowbar stuck in the ground. And he began to dance as we got near and bellowed even louder. Agatha mooed and broke into a trot, pulling me along. And the bull lunged on the end of his chain and my dad said, take her in. I gave her slack and she stepped into the bull's area, at which time he stuck out his tongue, which was the size of my arm, and began to lick our cow's butt. This was beyond anything I could imagine. And then a long spindly dripping thing emerged from a sheaf underneath the bull's belly and, and all this accompanied by bellowing and mooing and I'm holding the lead line. And then the bull jumps on Agatha's back and sticks and more bellowing and mooing and riding. And then, and the bull was off and he goes back to eating grass. And my father turns to me and says, well, that's it. Back at the janitor job. At the same time my cousin Ernie was leaving, a new priest was taking over, Father Fauché. And with Father Fauché came two housekeepers. One, an older woman, a retired housekeeper, Miss Teresa, and a younger woman, Miss Frances, who actually housekept the rectory and the altar of the church. They both wore white polyester uniform dresses. And as far as I know, those are the only clothes they own. Miss Teresa was a, was a sweet lady in her 60s and always asked me about my family and was, was always happy to see me at church if I was working or just worshiping. Miss Frances was probably in her early 40s. She had exuberant hair and a huge smile and spoke no English. Uh, she, she spoke only French and um, which I could not understand. And Miss Francis would stand close to me, grinning and say, I don't know what in Canadian French. And I was a 14 year old boy and I couldn't help but notice her tight white polyester uniform and how the buttons holding her more than ample bosom were being strained to the max, near to explode at any second while she grinned and told me, I don't know what. Also, Miss Francis took care of the altar while I took care of the seating in. And, and I, I would be vacuuming, pushing my vacuum back and forth and sucking up the dust while Miss Francis would be cleaning the altar, polishing something, her butt shaking, straining at the seams of her uniform while she polished. And, and I'm fighting off impure thoughts, impure thoughts in church, Jesus on the cross right there, me pushing the vacuum back and forth, and Miss Francis. Besides the carnal lust, I was dealing with something even more alluring 
because I could act on it. Potato chips. Potato chips were a special treat in my family. You could only have them a couple times a year. And in the basement of St. Raphael's, there, were, uh, a, there was a, a room where events were held. And there was a small kitchen. And on the shelf was an open, half-eaten bag of potato chips. It sat there. The top crumpled and clamped with a plastic clasp. And for a week after week, it sat there. There was seldom anything to happen in the basement. And, and, but I had to go down there every week and sweep and dust. And each time the potato chips called out to me, an already open bag, half gone, untouched by anyone for her, probably months since the post first communion party. And eventually, I had to open it and look inside. And there they were, salty, waiting. And after a couple of looks, a thought arose. My mother had always said, when you waste food, you make baby Jesus cry. And how long before potato chips spoil? Go to waste. And so I pulled out one chip, just to test, to see. and. And it was fine. And I immediately closed the bag back up and I put it in its place on the shelf. And, but I did this week after week. And the guilt lingered. I was coveting and stealing chips from the church, in the church. And I had to go to confession upstairs in this very building to Father Fauché, who was also my boss. But luckily, a wise saint had built into the ritual of confession an out clause. The act of confession starts with, bless me, Father, for I have sinned, and you rattle off your sins, which for me was usually being mean to my little brother, fibbing to my dad. But now I had all these other sins. Luckily, at the end was that built-in wiggle room clause. You say, I'm sorry for these, and all the other sins I have committed, like stealing potato chips, thoughts of watching Miss Francis's butt shake, hoping the buttons would pop on her uniform, all those sins cleansed away by that clause. It all ended when I was ready to go off to college. and I'd been a good Catholic boy and attended all services, uh, often just praying or even walking four miles to and from church, sometimes just to pray in the winter. Father Fauché several times said, I think God is calling you to the priesthood. Not knowing that I was a potato chip stealing, butt shake ogling, cow sex witnessing sinner. And I knew that the priesthood wasn't the path for me. On the last day, I, I, I guess the pressure of it all, as we talked, I, I, I started to, to leak tears. I couldn't stop, and, and he gave me his blessing, and he sent me into the rest of my life. Well, I have met some of you. When long after I returned home, the diocese had sent Father Fauché somewhere else, and Miss Francis and Miss Teresa, I suppose, went with him. The actual building, St. Raphael's, was eventually sold by the diocese to cover the cost of sex scandals at the other end of the diocese. I haven't even seen the building for decades, but I still remember vacuuming the floors, polishing them before Easter and Christmas, and praying for forgiveness at confession, cleaning my soul. Thank you. Woo <laughs> 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 <laughs>